This is Jeff Evans reporting for Global Medical News Network. I'm at the annual meeting of the American Neurological Association in Baltimore. Researchers here presented a study of 101 patients who were admitted to an emergency department with acute vestibular syndrome. By performing three ocular motor tests, the researchers were able to distinguish patients who had suffered an ischemic stroke from patients who had acute peripheral vestibulopathy with greater accuracy than magnetic resonance imaging. I spoke with the lead investigator from Johns Hopkins University, Dr. David Newman Toker, about his study. There are 2.6 million emergency department visits for dizziness every year, and about 5% of those patients have strokes, but we don't necessarily do a good job of recognizing them. And the highest risk patients are ones who come in sick, dizzy, throwing up, uh, don't want to move their head very much, and uh, have felt that way for at least 12 to 24 hours. And those are the patients we call the acute vestibular syndrome patients, and those patients uh, have probably somewhere between a 10 and 25 percent chance of having an underlying stroke. But they also look very similar in their clinical presentation to patients with what's called vestibular neuritis, which is a benign inner ear disorder. So we sought to find predictors at the bedside that would identify the stroke patients reliably and accurately. And what we found was that three eye signs that uh, eye examination features predicted stroke with perfect accuracy in our study. And, and we created the acronym HINTS to alert people to what those three eye signs are. So HI stands for head impulse test, N stands for nystagmus, looking for direction changing nystagmus, TS for test of skew or searching for vertical misalignment of the eyes by alternately covering the two eyes. Could you tell me about what some of the differences are in your study versus others that are similar to it and looking at? So there are a couple of studies that have been done looking at the issue of um, detecting acute vestibular syndrome patients as opposed to uh, <coughs> differentiating those with peripheral vestibular disorders from those who have stroke. But in none of those studies have they done repeated serial MRI scans to confirm the final diagnosis. Generally, the assumption has been that MRI scans have been the gold standard or reference standard to which the final diagnosis was compared. And in this study, in patients who had initially negative MRI scans that were done early on, we repeated the MRI scans to follow up to make sure that they didn't actually have strokes that, that evolved. And it turned out that 12% of the strokes were missed by the initial MRI scan, whereas none of the strokes were missed by our uh, physical examination. And uh, could you tell me about some of the limitations of your study and how you plan to carry this out in the future? So uh, the main limitation of the study is it was conducted at a, at a, a single stroke referral center and there was a single examiner, and that always raises questions about generalizability. And the findings were fairly robust, but it was the study was conducted in a high-risk stroke population, so uh, <clears throat> we have less robust estimates of uh, the uh, the what we call the specificity of our findings in patients who have benign vestibular conditions. What we're looking to do now is move this to the next level in terms of a, a clinical trial type uh, <clears throat> study where we're going to hopefully be able to recruit multiple centers to identify these patients and perhaps compare the use of a video goggles type device that can measure some of these eye movements to MRI scans as a, uh, a, a clinical trial uh, and comparative effectiveness to see if we can deliver higher quality care at lower cost. This has been Jeff Evans reporting for Global Medical News Network.